panelists for today include Brandy K. Biglow, who's the CEO and founder of Renovation Integrative Health, LLC. How you doing, Brandy? I'm doing well, Dr. Baldwin. How are you doing right. today? I am hanging in there, hanging tough. Can you provide an overview of what burnout looks like in healthcare and other work sectors? Yes. So first, I want to take a moment to say that it's occupational burnout because oh. it's very trendy and people like to prefer to burn out in many, many ways. Okay. So what we're going to be talking about today is occupational burnout. Occupational um, burnout. Okay. Occupational burnout. Oh, right. and it looks like mismatches in the relationship between the work environment mm -hmm. and the employee. And there have been six components identified by Dr. Christina Maslach. She is the guru of burnout. Mm -hmm. um, they include workload, control, reward, community, fairness, and values. And the person who develops burnout is simply manifesting the symptoms of the system in which they work. Okay. And those symptoms can be physical, mental, and emotional. They can impact the home, the work, and also their community interactions. Ah, okay. Okay. Great points there. Why is it important to discuss occupational burnout and what sparked your interest in this topic? Um, it is important to discuss burnout because people are hurting and they are suffering often in silence because they fear being judged or being looked at as weak. Um, it's also important because it negatively impacts productivity, retention and engagement. Mm -hmm. And if we're talking about companies, it impacts their burning, their, their bottom line. According mm -hmm. to research, the cost of replacing an employee due to issues related to burnout costs mm -hmm. anywhere from $25,000 to $100,000, wow. depending on their salary. So, and for those in service industries like healthcare and education, it mm -hmm. also impacts the services we provide to others. Um, so my interest was sparked because I saw others experience burnout and then I also experienced it myself a couple of years ago. Okay, so you saw others and, and yourself. Yeah. So uh, how does occupational burnout affect healthcare providers, both personally and professionally? So let's start with professionally. Depending okay. on the issue, whether it's engagement, energy, or efficacy, some issues employees will see is decreased productivity. They'll see increased errors in work. There's a lack of compassion or, or engagement with patients. There's mm -hmm. increased absenteeism. They're taking those leaves of absences. They're going on that FMLA and so, and so much more. And then personally, people struggle with sleep disturbance. They have appetite and mood liability. They okay. have gastrointestinal issues, cynicism, symptoms of anxiety, depression, isolation, feelings of exhaustion, and more. Uh, currently, there's over 130 symptoms that can be connected to occupational burnout. 130? 130 and counting. Okay. Okay. What, what, as we uh, talk about this, this burnout here, uh, one thing I've noticed, I've actually had an appointment uh, at my medical provider the other day and just noticed uh, even after the Christmas holiday and the New Year's holiday, everyone looked as if they burned were out. exhausted, yes. uh, burned out. Um, I could definitely uh, tell that it was difficulty focusing and concentrating mm -hmm. on some of the content and different things presented and and uh, some kind of minor mistakes made in, in some aspects of uh monitoring, you know, as far as records concerned. So is, is, is that common? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's common. All right. Um, so with burnout, what people uh, may or may not understand is that it's like this mm -hmm. interesting spectrum, you know, you don't just wake up and boom, you're on burnout. Sometimes right. most people can recognize it when they start to become exhausted. Like they're hitting that snooze button, they're sleepy, their energy is low, and then they start to get negative. They don't care anymore. They start making errors and they're, you know, that's the professional efficacy part. So there's three key pieces. And so if you look at the research of Maslach and a couple other people, they mm -hmm. have identified these profiles. One is disengaged, one is exhausted, and the other mm -hmm. one is uh, just low professional efficacy. And wow. either one of those, they don't necessarily reach burnout, but all three of them together constitutes burnout. And that's only about 15 to 20%, depending upon the research that you look at. So actually looking at all those components, just being a, a, a burden of a cost on the healthcare system itself. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. Overextended. We are whew, struggling out there. Okay. What what preventative strategies can be implemented to reduce occupational burnout among healthcare providers and workers? 
in in pretty much all these sectors? So that's a very interesting question. It's okay. not a clear answer because it depends okay. on the organization and it depends on the person, right? right. So I may thrive in a very high pace. Um, low, you know, low supervisory role where somebody, they need to be supervised more, they need more leadership. And depending upon the match, that determines whether or not they're going to be overextended, whether they're going to struggle with their professional efficacy and whether they're going to be cynical. So the key is to communicate, communicate with your senior leadership. If you have their ear, most of us don't. So we have to communicate with our supervisors and our managers and talk to them about the policies and the procedures and just the way things are going down to see if we can reduce some of those feelings of, of being overwhelmed. And that can be in any any way, shape or form. Uh, for example, workload is a big one. Oh, mm -hmm. I don't have time to do this. Well, how can I make it more efficient? Right. You know, what about the duplication of forms? That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. and, a and lot. <laughs> can we, can we lot. not fill this form out three times? You know? Right. Uh, <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and other things, it's like, you know, a company may think that them putting in a wellness center is great when what the employees want, can you just fix the fax machine that keeps going on the fritz, you know? So it's about communicating and having that collaborative effort and then committing to making those changes little bit by little bit. Okay, so engaging with that senior leadership and those uh, finance people. Uh, can, okay, because yeah. I, I was going to ask you that question. So there mm -hmm. are there any other ways that the healthcare executives who are actually not practicing mm -hmm. on the floor with the people who are actually doing the work? Uh, how can they create a, a supportive and resilient work environment for the people who are actually doing the work? It's looking at the policies and procedures, right? So you have a huge organization. And so if you want to, if you break it down, they have clinical teams or they just have teams. You mm -hmm. have your finance teams, you have your operation teams, and you have your clinical teams. What they do is very different from one another. So mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. do have those overarching overarching policies and, and procedures, but at the same time, you want to come down to that, to that team level and look at ways you can help just that team be more efficient, right? And, and, and that's how you really reduce burnout because you got to have your overarching, but it's at the team level because what works for finance may not work for IT, may not work for your nurses, may not work for your doctors. And so you're looking at everything all together to, to make a conscious decision. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that, 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 that information there. Mm -hmm. As, as it relates to technology, um, from your observation or anything that you uh, have experienced, how has technology contributed to or help alleviate burnout in healthcare and other work sectors? Well, right as it stands, technology has been technology in and of itself is neutral, mm -hmm. right? Is is it can help or it can hurt when it's well thought out and it's implemented well, it's great. Right. However, currently that is not the case. The EHRs are too many clicks. They're slow. They don't talk to each other. You know, they don't have so so many issues, right? And they're they're working on this, but technology, for example, like AI coming out helping to track symptoms of patients can be very helpful because, you know, we have limited time to spend with our patients, but by having like a dashboard to say, okay, what has Dr. Baldwin been working on? What are his goals? I can see your numbers in the dashboard and I can come in and say, okay, mm -hmm. I see you having some issues here. Mm -hmm. I see you're doing really well here. Mm -hmm. What are your barriers? AI can help with that. Um, but the issue, the biggest issues that I see that I hear about is the EHRs and the duplication of stuff and the slow okay, systems right. not being able to communicate with each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Can you share a personal story related to burnout? I heard you mention something a little bit earlier uh, so as a what practitioner. Happened was, <laughs> what happened was <laughs> so what uh, that happened highlights, was. you know, the challenges and potential solutions as 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 a practitioner. Yeah, absolutely. So what had happened was I worked in a community mental health agency. I worked my way all the way up to program manager. Um, and when I look back on it now, I recognize that there was a lot of issues with fairness, a lot of issues with mm. workload, a lot of issues mm. with value. Mm -hmm. But the reason I stayed there so long is because we had a really tight knit community where we okay. really supported one another. Right. Um, at, however, it got to a point where I just could not, I could no longer be the yes man or the yes woman. And I was pushed out, which is okay. I don't mind because um, it put me in this position, but I, I had to take some time off and just rethink about what I wanted to be as a clinician and right. how I wanted to help 
why I got into this field in the first place. And mm-hmm. so it allowed me to do that. And so now, because I in myself experienced burnout and I don't want anybody else to go through that, that is that is my passion now. Absolutely. Okay. okay. You, you're on a pathway of becoming a doctor of behavioral health. Yes. And are there any aspects of the uh, and pathways of becoming a doctor of behavioral health that's given you more insight on how you would, you know, support um an environment that that reduces stress, you know, improve productivity, just the efficiency of of any healthcare um, program that I'm sure that you would lead in the future. <laughs> I receive it. Um, All right. So the wonderful thing about becoming a DVH is that it's it's everything. The integrative health is everything. As a licensed mental health clinician, we are learned to talk about the emotional and sometimes the the mental. Mm-hmm. Well, integrative health, it also includes the body. And so when you take how you're eating, how you're sleeping, how you're moving, how you're hydrating, and combining that with strategies uh, that are known to help reduce stress and feelings of overwhelm, such as meditation, um, and just chain reframing, perspective taking, all these things that we do as clinicians, it really gives you a well-wanted approach to preventing burnout. Um, that physical lays the foundation then the boundaries mm-hmm. that you set kind of mm-hmm. kind of builds it up. And then mm-hmm. you are able to have a conversation with everybody at every level, which mm-hmm. is important because I got to talk about my money. I got to right. talk about my money. Okay. You do have to talk we about gotta, it. You got to talk about it. You got to talk about our stakeholders, mm-hmm. you know? And so <clears throat> as a, as a DBH, I'm able to have those conversations because I understand what's important to those stakeholders. And when I can say, Hey, if you don't reduce burnout, this is going. This is where it's going to hurt your organization. This is where it's going to hurt it financially. This is where it's going to hurt it in customer service and and patient satisfaction. This is where it's going to hurt it in retention and employee engagement. This is where it's going to hurt. And from my education as a DBH, I can talk to all of those points. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, we definitely um, need the DBH perspective when it comes to healthcare on all of those those points. Um, as healthcare executives, as uh, finance people, as uh, clinicians, uh, you know, holding each other uh, accountable and, res- and responsible uh, for uh, those type of environments is what's going to help push, I think, uh, the, you know, just push these environments into like, you know, wellness, more strengthening in, in areas of wellness, more balance. Um, because, you know, if you have when you say occupational burnout with all of these components with the people who are, who are serving, you're going to just constantly have this turn turnaround. Mm-hmm. There's this high burnout rate, uh, which is definitely going to affect uh, the quality of care. You know, people are human. Uh, there's going to be errors. Then that's going to affect patient cares, which is going to affect finances. And as we move from this fee for service to this value-based care, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, where you getting, paid for uh, the health outcomes of your patients, uh, that's going to, that's really going to change the ball game. That's going to change the ball game. So why not now, you know, uh, you know, have the conversations in all, all sectors uh, so that we can, you know, get in front of, of the conversation um, of value-based care instead of, you know, uh, falling behind, you know, the, the wayside. Mm-hmm. And, and which we know that these things that you that you mentioned in this podcast, uh, some of these uh, not helpful and and healthy things, mm-hmm. um, affect overall you know aspects. No matter if you're clinically uh, involved or financially involved. So I, I definitely appreciate you providing that insight. Um, is there anything uh, that you would like to? Uh, provide to our audience uh, who are definitely working people who are listening yes. uh, to this, uh, who may be facing occupational burnout uh, out there in the world. I mean, the first thing you want to do is, are you are you in burnout or are you overextended or mm-hmm. are you exhausted or are mm-hmm. you struggling with your professional efficacy? It's trying to figure that out, right? The other part is looking at your job environment. There, the conversation is starting to change where 
companies are now taking some accountability for their role in burnout. Okay. But okay. most often, and when you look at most programs, mm -hmm. the the focus is still on the on the person. The person mm -hmm. is the blame. They're mm -hmm. not strong enough. They don't have the right time management. They don't have the right skill set. And that's not that's not that's not true. It is a combination of both the employee and the employer and the organization. So what I would say, mm -hmm. what I would say to that person who's struggling is look at your job and see what's going on. Is it the values? Is it the fairness? Is it the community? Is it the reward system? Is it the workload? What is it that is causing you to feel this way? And see if you can shift, see if you can talk to your supervisor to change it. And if there's nothing you can do at the end of the day, plan your exit, right? Um, because it just may not be a good match for you. It may be a good match for your, you know, somebody else, but not for you. And it's also looking at yourself and saying, can I do this? Is this something that I want to do? Um, is my company willing to make changes with me? And if they're not, because some companies are not, they just, they, you know, they just want to do the do more with less people, you plan your exit. I, I am a firm believer. I, I promise you I'm starting a grassroots movement here. Okay. That we have to start, you know, speaking up for ourselves mm -hmm. and saying no more because that CEO and that C-suite, they are banking on the backs of, of clinicians and nurses who really, really care, who are struggling with compassion fatigue and secondary trauma. Um, and, and it's time for us to say, you know what? No more. You need to treat me with respect and, and give me the honor that I am deserved. And stop burning me out. Stop <laughs> making me work for these pennies. <laughs> and not caring uh, about me. <laughs> I, I I hear you. Thank you. Thank you for this the, for those recommendations and that insight. Um, I'm quite sure someone is listening. I hope so. And and uh, that the message would get clear and directly to the right people and the right person. I'm quite sure after hearing this podcast. I hope so. Brandy, thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for sharing your expertise. Um, I'm constantly monitoring a lot of your 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 conversations uh, that you are putting out there on on different social media platforms are uh, relating to this particular conversation. It caught the attention of our audience. It caught the attention of some of the healthcare executives I know um, who are looking at what can they do. Um, to to combat this. So thank you for your expertise and your insight. And thank you for making time for us today. You are most welcome. It is my honor and it's my pleasure. All right. And we look platform. Hey, no doubt. And I look forward to having more conversation because burnout, <laughs> excuse me, occupational burnout is going to go throughout the year. So yes, looking at more uh conversations on this. So thank you. And thank you to our audience for coming out uh, and listening to uh, our podcast and we hope that you subscribe like and share our podcast series again thank you for coming out and have a great day